Hello, my name is Gorka Marjan. Today I'm going to show how to build a push notification enabled Cordova application using JBoss Developer Studio 8. Uh, for the push notifications, I'm going to use the AeroGear push notification server. First, let's install and, and configure our uh, push notification server. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to use the OpenShift cloud service and use the AeroGear push quick start on OpenShift. Let's give it a name. And then create a new project. And once we start doing this, what it will do is it will contact the OpenShift uh, service and create an application and start a new instance of OpenShift with the uh, AeroGear push notification push server uh, installed. As you can see the uh, push server is created. Uh, its URL is here. Let's copy this for further reference. And the initial password is 123 for the admin user. So let's finish up the uh, installation. And yeah. The next thing we are going to do is to configure our push server. So let's go and paste the, the URL that we have just copied. The username is admin and password is 123. Uh, yeah, it's asking us to change the password. Yep. Once we do that, we go into the, the push server dashboard and inside the dashboard, as you can see, we have no applications. So let's create an application. And then let's select our app. As you can see, we don't have any variants. So let's create a variant. Uh, my select Android. Android. Um, it's actually using the Google Cloud messaging. So it's actually asking for a key for the Google Cloud messaging, which you can get from uh, the, the Google um, Play. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I already have those keys noted here, so I'll just copy them. And the project number as well. And add them. So now I have my Androids uh, Android variants registered. So next we go into our JBDS, uh, JBoss Developer Studio, and, and start with by importing an existing uh, Cordova project, which does some useful stuff then um, in a hello world. So yeah, uh, let's browse. Um, I actually have the um, projects here. As you can see, it detects that there are uh, Cordova projects. I'll just use the jQuery mobile one and copy that into workspace because I don't want to my changes to be reflected back into the main repository. So, um, and once I do that, it notices that, oh yeah, you, you need 
Cordova push uh, plugin for um, Air Gear. Uh, so it goes and installs it to my project. And once I do that, uh, I actually have a Cordova application created for me with all the necessary files. And one of those necessary files is the app.js file, which actually has the information uh, for registering uh, with the unified push server. And also because this uh, example application uses a contact service with the contact service. Uh, the base URL for contact service, I already have a contact service running on, well, you guessed it, OpenShift. Uh, so I'll just get the URL, copy it here, and there you go. So this is, the, this is for the contacts backend. It has nothing to do with the, the push server itself. So what I want to do is I want to have the push server configuration to have the correct values for variant IDs, secrets, and server URL. To get the, that information, I will go into my Android variant, go to example application, select Cordova, and just copy this part. and paste it here and I'm done. My server is supposedly configured right now. So uh, the next thing is to run this application. In order to run the, the jQuery mobile quick start application, I'll just go in say run as, run on Android device. Uh, what it will do is it will uh, now compile the application for Android and then publish it to the device and, in, and install it. And while it's doing that, I'll start this small application so that the screen of my, uh, screen of my uh, device if this application can actually spot it. Try. Sometimes it helps to unplug and plug the application. Yep. I just didn't break the uh, JBoss Developer Studio's connection with the device. Uh, now the completion is almost complete. Let's go and see the screen of our application uh, device. Um, because once it's started, uh, one thing that you should watch out for is, as you can see, this variants do not have any installation. So once our application is started, and it's getting started right now, uh, we should actually see installations listed there. Um, so let's try to log in. The username is... Uh, John. The password for John is John. So once we log in, uh, we should see the we should actually see the the list of uh, contacts that are coming from our server. So if we go here and refresh. You 
can see that we actually have an installation over here. And let's send a push or push message to test screencast. Yes, um, let's see. Yeah, you can see that it's already here. Uh, my application is running on, on, on front end. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll put my application to background and send a second notification. As you can see, there is already a notification appearing up in the notification area. And if I click on it, I can see the uh, notification itself. So this concludes our um, screencast about using uh, Airgear push notification server with JBoss Developer Studio to develop a Cordova-based application.